It's a privilege to be with you when those two, uh, Pat said he was going to be gone. John said he was going to be gone. They asked me, I said, yay, I get to be at Equippers. So it's awesome because I hear something good that you guys are in escrow in your own home now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of testimonies of getting houses, what a blessing. And I know you've been tearing down, setting up for a long time. And then when you get to settle into something and start looking forward to what God wants to do in the future, I'm excited. How many believe good things are ahead? God things are ahead. Amen. <laughs> Well, um, last night about, oh, it was almost 11 o'clock, I got up to print my notes because I'm always thinking and changing stuff, and I got up at 11 to print my notes, and my computer's been heating up. I got a MacBook Pro, and it's been heating up and burning through juice, and I plug it back in, and it picked that time to flat out die. N no, you know, doing all the tricks, trying to retrieve it, trying to get it started, it is flat out dead. And so I went old school. I just hand wrote my message today. And uh, I don't have PowerPoint, so this is my visual. Jan, could you come up here and wave this branch? No, I'm just kidding. It, it, it's Palm Sunday today. Amen. We're going we're gonna to talk about that this morning. And, and uh, a key word that came out of that whole story is Hosanna. I want to talk to you about the meaning of Hosanna. Three different levels, three different meanings of Hosanna. And then we're going to do some of that Hosanning in a little while. Is that all right? So it's a pr privilege to be here. And uh, I want to just open in prayer and then we'll get in the word. I got some scriptures for you. I think they made it to the, uh, the, the screen so you can follow along with some of the scriptures I'm going to be reading. So, Father, just thank you so much again for your presence here. I thank you for the connection. I thank you for the camaraderie. Thank you for family that I feel in this place and some that I've known a long time, but others I've watched serve you from a distance. And uh, there's passion in this house, God, for your house. So come, Jesus, come, Holy Spirit. I pray that you would speak through me. Lord, I know my notes are all over the place, but my heart is full. So I pray that you would use this time to just encourage us, strengthen us, to keep us connected to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as somebody already said, you know, Palm Sunday is kind of the culmination of, uh, or the beginning, the culmination of Jesus' ministry as, uh, you know, anointed as the Son of Man. He called himself the Son of Man. And yet at the same time, he was anointed by the Holy Spirit as a prophet, as a priest, as a teacher, as a rabbi. He was a healer, a deliverer. He had fulfilled for three and a half years that whole role that God called him to and the scripture prophesies and speaks about. But on that, that time, when about a week before his heart turned, scripture said his face was set like flint to go towards Jerusalem because he knew he had a destiny, an appointment as the Passover lamb. And he needed to come in that capacity. He needed to come and shed blood for you and me that we might be forgiven and free. Amen? And he willfully did that. And so uh, that whole week from this, what we're going to celebrate, talk about Palm Sunday and to Easter, was strategic. The things he shared during that week, the meeting with his guys. He told his guys when he gathered in that upper room, you don't know how I've longed to spend this time with you, and gave final words and final instructions. And so uh, around the world, this is the most sacred week of the year to many, many people. In our busyness and all the stuff that goes on, I pray that we can pause and dig in this week and just listen and take from the Lord the importance of what Easter is about, what, uh, the importance of what Good Friday is about. There's opportunity to celebrate that. There's opportunity to dig in as a community, as God's big family this week and just participate at another level. And hopefully we're going to come out of this and enrich and stronger in a more vibrant way. Amen? Anybody believe for that? So... And so today I'm going to read the Passover story. It's in all four Gospels. All of them have a little different slant, but we're going to read. Uh, well, first of all, let's go to Hebrews 2. I think I put that in my slide about the importance of what Jesus did. This is in the Message Bible. I love this, but it, it, it explains just simply why he came, simply why he had to die, simply how he was sacrificed. Because, because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. 
We also know that the son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and his sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people since he himself has gone through suffering and testing. He is able to help us when we are being tested. Wow, is that powerful. He, he had to be made like us. He can identify with us. He knows what we're going through. Scripture said even now he sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for us, getting us through things. That's part of this whole thing about Hosanna, what Hosanna means. We're going to dig into it a little deeper. So we know why he came and we know why he died. And some of us have heard it over and over again. But I like this part in here. It just wasn't about for me individually. He, he came. He died. He was resurrected that we might be family, that we might be the family of God, brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And so look around. This is your family. But I, I've got to travel for the last uh, 30 some years, 50 some mission trips overseas. I've got to meet the family of God around the world. And they're filled with the same spirit, with the same precious desire. It's amazing to me when we get in the presence of God in any, any dialect, in any language around the world, you can feel that same presence. You can look upon their faces, whether it was in the mountains of Bolivia or the jungles of the Amazon, they still have that same look on their face. Ah, basking in God, touched in the heart by the living spirit of God. And we've been made the family of God. And that's why Jesus came, to make us family. And he wants us to live that way and celebrate that way. And that's what Hosanna is about as well. So if we could, let's go to Matthew 21. We're going to read the, the Palm Sunday story here in Matthew. And uh, this is about the triumphant entry. It says, now when they drew near Jerusalem, he came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. And then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village opposite you. And immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, and a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now, now this is Zechariah's prophecy from chapter 9, verse 9. That was written 540 years before Jesus came. This is how he would come in. This is how he would come, as the humble king, as the servant king. And it was fulfilled that day. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt and laid their clothes on them and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them out on the road. Then the multitudes who were before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Hosanna in the highest. Now many of you probably have looked that word up or know what it means. But Hosanna has a couple, a couple meanings, and hopefully we're going to appreciate it at a different level as I have this week studying it out. Hosanna it can be interpreted, Lord, save. Some say it's, a, it's interpreted, please, Lord, save. Others say it's more of a command or a demand. It's a desperation. Lord, save. Lord, show up. Lord, I need you. Lord, I, we, we have to have you. There's a desperation in it. And I've seen that desperation in different parts of the world. Actually, just a few weeks ago at church, there was a gal that came in the back. She looked like she was late 30s, maybe 40 years old. She's in tears. I didn't know her. I've never seen her before. A guy named Eric brought her. And she was in the back. So during prayer time at the end, I went up and talked to her. And she said she was just at Santa Rosa Park. Her 17-year-old daughter is strung out on fentanyl. She said she can't even put words together. She said, I've lost my daughter. She's a zombie. She just mumbles, and she, her, her, her body's shaking. And in that desperation, she's saying, could you pray for my daughter? Could you pray for my daughter? And that's a Hosanna prayer. God, come, save, deliver. God, show up on the scene. There's, there's pastors, there's people in Gaza right now. 1,500 Christians stayed behind in Gaza. They didn't evacuate with the rest of the Christians because they stayed to serve. 
And there's a move of God happening amongst them right now. If you look online, you can see it was a couple weeks ago. In one night, 200, 200 Gaza men, Palestinian Muslims, came because they had a vision or dream about Jesus in one night. They all showed up. They're getting saved. They're getting baptized. Because there's people in Gaza that are saying, save God. God, save. There's a desperation, a cry. God, move. God, come. God, deliver. That cry of our heart. I still remember when Pat and I were, we went to Paris. We had spoken, this is about 2003, I think. We had spoke in, um, around London, a couple different places. Not many of you might remember Bill Tatna, friend of the church. We were at Bill's, Bill's Church Jubilee. We did a um, little conference thing with him. And then we went to the Brussels uh, in Belgium. We did a couple meetings there. And we were supposed to go down towards Paris to speak. And it didn't work out. And the conference got canceled. So Pat and I decided to take a train, just go to Paris and bum around for a couple days. And the first day, we toured some of these, these churches. We're in the Notre Dame Cathedral. And these places that were just spectacular. And you know the story. These, these builders, these architects, were building to the glory of God. They were moved upon even the detail way up in the rafters, the little things they put, little images, little uh, pictures or drawings or artwork of angels and saints. And they did that. They said, well, maybe people can't see it, but we know God can see it. And so they built these things as, as monuments and places to worship God. But as we toured, there was no presence of God. They were museums, just, just stale, dead. In the Notre Dame Cathedral, I, I had one of those moments with God. I, I went and lit a candle, and I was praying for revival. And the next morning, I got up in my room, and I, we just had a little window. It was a small room and a small uh, hotel, and just a little glimpse up on the hill of this church that's on the hill over Paris. And I remember praying this prayer, God, how would you bring revival to this city? How do you bring revival to a city? And he said it so clearly. I listened for the cries of people. I listen for their cry, and I respond. Then he looks for deliverers amongst them, like he did with Moses. He spoke to Moses. He said, the cries of the people have come up before me, and I've come down to deliver. And when there's a cry in the community, God responds. There's, I believe there's revivalists being raised up right now to fight against this fentanyl thing. Amen? I, I, I believe that Hosanna prayer that says, God save, God come, is going to bring deliverance and breakthrough over that stinking crisis in our community where so many young people are dying. I, I, I just want to lift up a Hosanna prayer right now for this fentanyl thing. Can we do that? Could you just agree right now? Father, we thank you for intervention. We, we pray, God come. We need your presence. We need deliverers. We need helpers. We need a strategy against this thing, Lord, that's invading our community. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, maybe someone in this room or someone that would be listening has been impacted by this. Lord, we pray mercy over those families, grace over those families, breakthrough over those situations, those addictions, Father. I pray in Jesus' name that you will show yourself strong and send helpers and deliverers to, to minister to the people that are trapped in this addiction. We thank you for breakthrough in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. I just remember a few years ago, remember when the Ponga boats were dropping weed off on the coast? Well, it was a couple First Friday prayers. We got together and prayed, and then we look in the news, and they're getting arrested, and they're getting those boats and capturing the boats. One of the biggest drug busts in San Luis County happened after those prayers. How many believe we can pray Hosanna prayers, Hosanna prayers over the community to get some breakthrough? Amen? Well, this is the second side of Hosanna. And I have no clue where I am on my notes. And Emily, maybe there's a scripture in there to throw up. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, Psalm 118. Let's read this together. <laughs> Come on, read this. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let all Israel repeat, his faithful love endures forever. Let Aaron's descendants, the priests, repeat, his faithful love endures forever. Read this one with me. In my distress... I prayed to the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free. I'm going to read that line again. And the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is for me, so I have no fear. What can mere people do to me? When I think about this passage, somebody already mentioned Lisa, so I'm going to pick on you one more time, Lisa. But I've known Lisa Mars since sixth grade. 
I worked for parents when I first moved here to be youth pastor. I was selling real estate or trying to sell real estate. And, and Lisa was working in the office, and she would do some copying for me and things, and we became buddies back then. But I watched her life and some of the challenges and things that have happened with family issues and divorce issues and painful stuff that began to happen in high school and then beyond that, and, and life got complicated. And I saw Lisa, who was, you know, brought to church, and that just started to drift like many of us do, and pretty soon things started getting pretty gnarly, pretty out of control for her. And I remember being on my knees numerous times with her parents praying these Hosanna prayers. Lord, deliver. Lord, save her. Lord, send people into her path. Lord, bring revivalists, bring hunger, bring a change, bring dreams, Lord. We ask, God, that you would deliver Lisa. And so I'm so proud and excited to see what God's doing in her life today and how she's thrived at this church. I say thank you to everybody who's reached out, everybody that's helped her. She's, she's a trophy of God's grace. And, and this community can be filled with trophies, amen? As uh, the body of Christ is the body of Christ, to reach out and to, to make a difference. So thank you for that. That was the result, result of Hosanna praying. But here's the other side of Hosanna. The, that means, the Hosanna also means to give praise, to say thank you. Reverentially, to say, God, I recognize it's you that have moved. God, I recognize it's the, you that have broke through. Lord, I recognize that it's you that have provided. So in that crowd that was there when Jesus went up the, the hill there in the donkey, there was people yelling, Hosanna, and some were saying, God, we, we were asking you, God, save. Break this rule. Break this Roman rule over us. God, re reestablish the Hebrew kingdom amongst us. That was part of their prayers for that kind of salvation. But right before Jesus ascended, it says in John's gospel, he had just raised Lazarus from the dead. You know who else was in the crowd? The other people saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, he was dead and he's alive, Hosanna. Jairus' daughter, she was dead and you raised her from the dead, Hosanna to you. Jesus, I was there when you fed the 5,000, you provide wonderfully, Hosanna, Hosanna to you. Lord, you raised the, the poor from the ash heap. Lord, you, you delivered, you set free. In one of the Gospels, it says right before he ascended on the donkey, you know where he spent that night before? In a guy named Simon's house. Simon was a leper that he healed. He lived in Bethany. Jesus got to hang out with a guy. He changed his whole life. This guy that had been a leper, unclean, not able to, to move amongst society, had been set free, and Jesus hung out with him and had his last meal before he ascended into Jerusalem with a guy named Simon. Not only that, at that little gathering, there was a gal named Mary. And Mary had taken this expensive perfume. Two Gospels call her Mary. One Gospel says she was a woman, I forget the term they used, struggling or, or, or you know, she was an outcast. Well, this gal, Mary, took that expensive perfume and she anointed his head and it flowed down. And then as it dripped to his feet, she took her own hair and wiped his feet. That was a Hosanna. We'll talk a little about that kind of Hosanna in a second. But the other part of Hosanna is, first, there's, there's prayer, there's a crying out, and the second part of Hosanna, when the answer comes, there's rejoicing, there's celebration. You and me need both those, those kind of Hosanna prayers and Hosanna praise going in our life, amen? amen. Jesus said this, if, if they don't praise me, the very rocks and stones are going to cry out because it's victory, it's, it's victory. You know what's so important about palms, or one thing is what, why they mention palm leaves? They say for eons that palms, palm leaves, were symbols of victory with integrity. In other words, as the generals would come back and the army would come back, they're waving palms and they're saying, good job, good strategy, way to win the war. You thought through it. You're victorious because of the strategies you developed. And so here comes Jesus, and they're waving palm branches and say, victory, Jesus. Thank you for being deliverer. Thank you for being Messiah. Thank you for coming, as Scripture said you would. You fulfilled prophecy. With, with integrity, you become king. With integrity, you become Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When we think about Hosanna in the highest, that means above all. You're above all. When we magnify God, he doesn't get any bigger. He's as big as he's ever going to be. But when we magnify God, you know where he gets bigger? Right here in our heart. 
When we exalt him, thank him for breakthroughs, thank him for victories, thank him in testimonies of how he's provided, like we just heard supernaturally how God provides housing. I believe everybody in here has a Hosanna or two to share. Amen? How God has come through for you. Well, the third, the third Hosanna, and it's tied to this last thought, and it's really what kind of triggered me thinking even along these lines was... Um, Several days a week, I do morning devotionals in the hot tub. And uh, that, speaking of blessing, that was a freebie several years ago. Our, our friend was a contractor in Pismo, and we live right down by 4th in uh, James Way. And there's a circle street there. And up above, just a few blocks, uh, our friend who's a contractor was remodeling a backyard, and this gal's pulling a hot tub out. And he says, Mike, you want a hot tub? And I said, yes. And so... <laughs> We got some guys, got us set up in our backyard. So in my free hot tub, I have devotionals. I have my ear pods in. I'm listening to a podcast by Neville Johnson, who's an old timer, uh, father in the faith. And in that podcast, he starts talking about, you know, we always say there's a hole in everyone's heart that only God can fill. Have you ever heard that? And so he, he explained that a little, that, you know, God wants communion. And he's de designed us with a place in our hearts only he can fulfill. But then he said this. He said, but you know there's a heart, uh, there's a hole in Jesus' heart that only you can fill? That, that when he was on the cross, what kept him on the cross wasn't the mass evangelistic crusades. It was the individuals. You were on his mind. You and me were on his heart when he was dying on the cross. And Neville Johnson said this. Jesus as the son of man, he experienced loneliness. He experienced isolation. Even when he was going to the cross, you know, he said, Father, if you can take this cup from me, he felt the weight as Jesus, the Son of Man. He felt the persecution. He could hear even in the crowd the different things that people were saying. They were calling him a fraud, a fake, a troubler of Israel, all those things. And at the same time, he could hear the, the praise, the thank yous. He could hear the gratitude. And this is what Neville Johnson said. You know, when we're going through tough stuff, there's Hosanna moments where God does things in our life to show us that he's real because he wants to propel us forward into the call and, the, and, and into the convictions, into the things that he's designed us for. Those, those Hosanna moments are where God reveals himself in a special way to keep you on the right course. Maybe it's a prophetic word. Maybe it's just the time where you, you're just overwhelmed with his goodness like our sister starts crying. I get those moments. God, you're just so good. And your heart gets flooded, and you feel that resurgence. Hosanna moments. When, when God's in, he's, he's intersecting with us. He's revealing himself to us. It keeps us guided. I, I think about several of those times. Uh, I remember in 1993, I was praying about moving our family to Bolivia. I don't think Jan was praying about it, but I was praying about it. Because we, we had some friends who were ex extraordinary missionaries there. The guys, young families, two young families. They were working high altitude with the, the Quechuan people, and these were descendants of the Incas, and it was just frontier work. And so I got invited to go, and, and uh, I was praying about it even before I left because Tim Morbitzer, who is the founding pastor of Agape, he, he caught me a couple weeks before that trip, and he said, Mike, I'm praying about moving our family back to Indiana, and I believe you should be the next pastor. I said, Tim, I'm heading to Bolivia praying about maybe that as our next destination. He said, you pray, I'll pray. Well, we were up there for, I don't know, eight, ten days. And towards the end, we were hiking into this one region. And they were interpreting from English to Spanish, Spanish to Quechuan. It was super difficult. And I was speaking for a while. I thought, I'm just going to sit down and in the back. You guys handle it, Spanish to Quechuan, easier. I got in the back, I opened up my Bible, I'm reading in Jeremiah, and the presence of God came in just such a profound way. I can still feel it talking today. And, and he, I opened my Bible at Jeremiah 3, and he spoke to me. I wrote it in my Bible. He said, Mike, I've, I've called you as an elder to Agape Church, and I'm not calling you away. I'm setting you in that place. And it settled things. Then I opened that passage. It says, you know, return unto me, O backsliding children, for I'm married to you, and I'll take one from the city and one from Zion, and I'll give them shepherds after my own heart that they would feed them with knowledge. And essentially that word would to teach them to prosper. I had a commissioning right there and a settling in my heart of the call right there. 
And guess what? I'm still agape. I've tried to leave and come back, tried to leave and come back. And I'm still connected because of that word that God gave. And it was one of those words that I just went into Thanksgiving. It settled so much. It was a Hosanna word. Lord, I thank you that you make yourself clear. I thank you that you come and speak and clarify when I need it because he's a good God. Amen. Jesus said he would be a guide. He would be our comforter. He would be our helper. And I'm grateful for all of that. Amen. And so when I think of that last week that Jesus lived and how the Father encouraged him along that road, how the lady with the perfume, when she pours that out, people are trying to stop her. Jesus said, no, no, let her do this. For it's going to be told about her forever. And do you think he needed that acknowledgement? No, I think he knew it was ahead. And that was an encouraging word where, the Lord was speaking. The Father was speaking just like he did at Jesus' baptism. This is my beloved son. He, he confirmed in that moment, now you're being anointed for what I've sent you for. You're going to be anointed for burial. You're going to be anointed to pay the ultimate price. It was a reaffirming word, an encouraging word. I'm sure distressful. But those things God does with, I would call those Hosanna moments where we're, we're connected, where he's speaking, where we're worshiping, where we're thanking where we're appealing to heaven, and he answers. Those moments that he's designed for our whole lives to keep us connected with him. Like, like Neville Johnson said, that hole in his heart is for community. That hole in his heart is for fellowship. I'm in this season right now. We're in grandparent mode. We have seven grandkids now. Two of them are running around here. The parental unit is right here in the front, Michaela. And... Uh, and our other, our other five grandkids, three in Florida, two now in Tennessee, but Briggs and Rooney are getting really close. Actually, Briggs was, they were living with us when Briggs was born. And there, there's something about that little guy, and Rooney just came up and gave me a hug before and just put her head on my shoulders. So I'm just going to go home now. I'm just going to take Rooney. I'm going to go home. Just, just that connection where you feel that love and that, that just, the, you know, they look at you like, Papa. And Briggs runs across the yard, Papa, when I come. And last Sunday, they came over to the house. It was our birthday, my birthday. When I say our, that's my twin brother, too. And uh, so Briggs just comes up, and we went for a walk. And we do it often. There's a drainage basin across, our, uh, and, uh, across the street from our house. And we walk along there and throw rocks. And he picks up rocks and puts them in his pockets. And we watch the ducks. And this time, I was watching the vultures circle. And it's my birthday. <laughs> what do they know here? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're looking at me. They know I'm 68 now. What's the, a, anyway, we're, we're walking along there, and he's, he just grabs my hand. And there's something in that connection when I feel that love for him, like this boy can do no wrong. So many of us have grown up with this idea of God that he's mad and he's keeping score all the time, that he's not satisfied, that he's not happy with you. But if you and me could ever get in that place where we live like we're loved because he really does love us, he just didn't come for some, you know, prophetic thing or some, you know, divine destiny thing. It was, it was about that, but more so because he wants relationship with you and me. He wants to have Hosanna moments with us. He wants us to connect at heart level. And, and you know, Josh and I, we pick up rocks, and then at the end, there's this little metal PG&E box, and we get dirt clods, and we throw dirt clods because they explode. And he's going... Pew! As the dirt clouds are exploding. I mean, those things are precious to me now. <laughs> but how about you and Jesus just sitting down and he starts talking to you about the word? He's the most interesting person in the universe. In the universe. He was with God in the beginning when they created. I mean, I was, we were up watching the elephant seals. Haven't you been up the coast and watch the elephant seals? So I'm reading about elephant seals, and it says, you know, they leave the beach, they go for thousands of miles, but they can dive to two to 4,000 feet. I think, what did they do that for? Well, there, there's these little fish, that they're lantern fish, they, they glow, they light up. And they're down that deep, and these elephant seals go down that deep to eat. And I think, it's just like God to light up their meal in the darkness and say, here, this is for you. Those things make me worship. I don't know about you, but when I think about that stuff, how creative our God is and how wonderful our God is and how he's taken care of every living thing and he can take care of you and me, and yet he wants to sit with us. He wants to commune with us, and that's what Easter is about.
to break the bonds of sin that you and me might have relationship with him. Amen? Thanks so much for tuning in. We hope that that message was inspiring, encouraging, and hopefully equipped you for life. And if you're looking to get connected with Equippers Church, you can go to equipperscc.com slash connect, fill out a simple form, and someone from our team will be reaching out. You can find all kinds of opportunities to connect, to give, and receive prayer on our website, equipperscc.com. And hey, we really hope to meet you in person sometime, see you in the room. But until then, keep tuning in. We hope that you are blessed by Equippers Church here on YouTube. Love you so much. God bless.